In this week of the FTC decode season, we've seen some amazing prototypes. I believe they have full CAD set up online and is their park. I think this is a really creative way of solving the... I'm Coach Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics design for over a decade now. And today, we're going to look at some of the best intakes, shooters, and full robot designs that have been released this week in the FTC Decode season. Hopefully, by taking a look at some of these, it'll give you some inspiration for designing your own parts. So let's take a look. First up, taking a look at some intakes here. We have an intake from Aftershock 9880. I think it's an interesting example of using a... Uh, a, a rotating intake for this decode season. Not something that I've seen many robots do before up to this point. So it's interesting seeing that they've got a little rotating arm pulling off of there. Whether it ends up working for them or not, we'll see where that goes in the season and how tight they can get inside those rotating sections. But maybe their hood or maybe their shooter has something that needs to rotate beyond uh, the other section of the robot. So they need to get a little extra space there. Next up on the intakes, we've got from 4525 Blazon Turtles. It's a great little example of a rubber band intake here. And uh, they've just got it hooked up on a drill, but it does show the viability of rubber bands. We've seen more of these rubber bands happening. It's interesting having a rubber bands at different angles as well. And of course, you know, this is going really quick because it's on a drill. One thing I am going to be curious about is the thickness of the rubber bands that teams end up choosing and uh, how well they can hold up to the restraints of the season. You wouldn't want too many of these breaking in the mid-match. So I'd like to see some testing from teams using rubber bands. Uh, can you remove some rubber bands from your system, and are you still capable of picking up the ball reliably? That's something you'd want to test, especially when you're using something that is not typically an engineering material. Let's take a look here at uh, Team SolarStorm 27019. It's a great example, I think, of a full breadth intake coming in here. One of the challenges this season is, that I foresee happening for teams is that you're going to have balls all around your field, artifacts everywhere. And being able to have a wider intake or more abilities to be able to have an intake working is going to help. One thing I'd like to see on the testing scenario here is rather than moving the ball into the intake, moving the intake into the ball. It is a really positive scenario when you are rolling balls in that I think it's not going to help you with the actual testing and prototyping phase here. Moving away from intakes, we are now going to take a look at some shooters here. We've got Team Zap with a robot in 24 hours uh, prototype here. A couple things I like about this prototype. I like the nice wide hopper that they've got set up here. If you have a human player and they're going to be grabbing this, which clearly they are, makes it really easy for your human player to put those artifacts into their launcher. You always want to make your things as easy for your driver as possible. By adding in a lot of compliance, a lot of room for error, you allow your human player to not have to be absolutely bang on accurate. And I believe they've got a quick little auto test here as well. And it can show that their shooter is uh, quite accurate for the most part, at least in this auto-controlled scenario. One thing I am curious about is how much left and right deviation they end up getting on their shots over time because they've got a really interesting orientation on this shooter. It's actually 90 degrees off of that hooded shooter as opposed to in other directions. But it does show that it can be successful. You don't always have to be launching up and over that hood. Taking a look at another uh, shot here, we've got team 2712 Kenny Donuts. It looks like they have uh, some uh, uh, PID control set up using April Tag tracking. We can see that a little more at the start of the video here. Uh, I actually have no idea how to go back on shorts. There it is. So we can see that as they rotate this around and they move it back, there's a little bit of a wiggle of that arm uh, or that rotating turret. And my guess is that's likely to do with some APROTEG localization on that. So they've got a great shooter shooting up from pretty far away in the back launch zone. Uh, again, favorable conditions, but at this point, that's pretty good to be able to hit bang on right into where they want. I think three balls successful. Nice work out there, Kenny Donuts. We've got another one here from How14469. And they've got a catapult shooter set up. I believe this is the early learner's robot for theirs. 
And I just think it's a great example of showcasing that you can have a viable shooter and a quick little uh, hopper with a catapult releasing off of some spring power. Awesome little uh, spring power. One thing I am curious about here is how well those rubber bands are going to hold up over a season. I think it's a great example of, hey, you know what? You've got something working quite well. It's not competitive or it's not crazy competitive at the moment, but that's okay. That's not the purpose of this because it is, they're clearly taking that sprint terminology. And I love seeing that. Uh, I love seeing that they're going to be able to work on more iterations and let's see how we can make this better for version two. I'm a big fan of minimal viable prototypes and how 14, 4, 6, 9, you're doing a great job of minimal viable prototypes. We've got two parts here from Little P little potato robotics uh, and uh, i just want to take a look at this turret design they have uh, two large uh, gears set up here so they've got a large turntable gear on the bottom and then they also have another gear that's sort of a rack and pinion system on the back of the or i guess it's not a rack and pinion it would just be a standard gear but it's only like a quartered gear on the back so they can have an adjustable hood as well as adjusting the turret section as well Another example of a great rabbit prototype, and they also have an example of it actually functioning here from short and medium different distances. So they're nice up and close. I love that it's placed up on cardboard box, and then doing a little more hand feeding here. And we can actually see in the end of this video here, where we can see that this hood is down at a bottom section, just strapped onto a simple uh, servo. And then up here, we can see that it's strapped up to the top, and it looks like that servo has enough torque that it's capable of holding position as it is launching a ball through. Great first prototype, great way of making a hooded shooter to be able to change the angle that you need. Uh, one thing I'm curious about on this one is uh, what is the throughput through this device? How quickly can you get balls going through? And uh, this is a great example from team 24070 of a really high throughput shooter. I like that they write down that their accuracy is terrible, but it shows you can have quite a high throughput on your shooter. I'm curious at the back of their shooter here, if they have rolling compliant wheels on the back or it, like if these are on a bearing or if that's simply just a constrained section that it's holding within. I would uh, hesitate to use rolling sections on the back end of a hooded shooter because I think that's going to promote too much ball spin and you're going to be applying power to spinning the ball as opposed to applying power to the impulse of the ball to actually launch it in such a case. So I think you might actually find more success in this design if the assumption is that these are actually rolled suitors. But I would like to take a look at what 24070 is doing for their uh, flywheel, how many motors they're using to drive it, as well as if they have any sort of uh, moment of inertia or extra weight on the end of their flywheel here so they can have such a high throughput on this. Because you can see that they are able to load three or four balls in quite quick succession, and there's, there's not a huge drop in speed either. That'll be an interesting one to take a look at. Uh, last couple of things to take a look at here are some full robots. Uh, we've got uh, team 28,300 and 27,674. They've got a full autonomous up and running. Uh, and I think it's a great example of looking at some pathings of teams working together. So they've got a couple, again, large, wide compliant intakes on this wooden robot here. You can see just how wide they can open uh, sections up. They do struggle a little bit to grab that last ball, but it looks like it is uh, held in by their compliant sections. It's really impressive at this stage in the game to already be getting this many points. And I think it goes to show as well just how viable boot kickers are going to be for actually picking up balls. It also shows this idea of teams running different lanes. So we can see that this team in the back here runs along this third section lane, whereas this team in the front runs along this second section lane so they don't end up interrupting over each other. One thing I am curious about here is does 28,300 have to be shooting from this uh, connection point here or could they shoot from further back on this launching zone instead of having to run all the way into that uh, center section? And same thing, could this team shoot, get a little bit closer so that you give your teams a little bit more tolerance uh, inside there without having to fly so close to the sun with each other. In any case, excellent job on this first autonomous teams.
We've got another robot making a comeback here. We've got uh, the Dino Knot, which is 27,572. And I think this is a great example of using some herringbone gears to be able to launch the robot from quite far away. They've got a surgical tube uh, intake, which is kind of like a rubber band tube, but just much thicker. And it's a great example of being able to pretty accurately fire from all the way at the back in the far launch zone. One thing I am curious about is they've got a rather slow cycle time on here. And I wonder if it's because it's taking a long time for that flywheel to speed up, if it's the driver turning or where that is going. In any case, great example of a quick little prototype here and iterating on top. Oh, it's not surgical tube. It's just really thick rubber bands. That might be a way of getting across some of those uh, falling apart over time, but an interesting way of designing some of those uh, rubber band intakes as well. So nice job on that uh, Team Dino Knot. Another one I show off one here is from uh, Team CSK Developers. It is a great iteration of a, uh, a quick, and I want to show this off because it's got a lot of compliance from Team 23,441. Got a lot of compliance for the human player to be able to just drop it into this much, very large hopper, drive back, and then shoot those in as well. Uh, I'm a big fan of adding extra compliance in on the human player and to already have a robot that is scoring this consistently right at the start here is an excellent, uh, (laughs) I do like how I say when consistently it ends up uh, dropping a ball there, but for the most part, it looks pretty darn consistent being able to get some balls in there. Maybe a little fast on that throughput might want to check the RPMs on that and that your flywheel can't push through if that flywheel is not at a full RPM there. But lots of compliance for your human player. I love to see it. Nice job out there, Team 23,441. The last robot I want to show off here is from Team Robonauts 118, which is an FRC team, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, And they released something called an EveryBot, where they have a full CAD designed here that teams can use and take a look at. I think it's a great example of looking at some of those rubber band uh, intakes pulling up I'm wondering what they're saying on sustainable there with so much 3D printed plastic on this point. Perhaps it's sustainable that it's easy to work with. I'm not sure where they're going with that one. But we can see that it's pretty impressive being able to pick up three balls with some rubber band intakes and then be able to launch three balls at a time on a catapult. It's going to be interesting to see this season whether teams go with the catapults or whether teams go with fly shooters or something else that it is that they're rocking on. But there's one more thing I want to show off on this EveryBot design. I believe they have full CAD set up online, and it is their park. I think this is a really creative way of solving the park problem, where it's just a simple little kickstand here like that. And it's just a little kickstand. We saw that of some of the Romanian teams with their level three hangs before. And you have three points where the robot is transitively supported. And it, if you have another robot that also does a kickstand, This is a great way of getting your robot fully in and their robot fully in. Uh, I'm curious if such a small form factor is going to end up being a dominant meta across teams to be able to allow them to all work together. But that's yet to be seen about what's actually going to happen with these dominant metas. Uh, In any case, nice job on this from Team Robobots or Robonauts, sorry, and being able to take a look at this and be able to provide this resource for other teams is also pretty cool. I'm curious how your team is doing on your designs. Let me know in the comments down below. And do you think that that little kickstand might end up being a bit of a dominant meta? Uh, If you're looking for more robotics resources, you can consider joining the community down below. Otherwise, best of luck out there in the FTC Decode season.